Hello Hood Coders and welcome back. In the previous video, we learned how we can easily convert an infix expression to a postfix expression. So if you don't know anything about this, check the link in the description box to watch the previous video. So in this video, we are going to learn how we can evaluate this expression. So without any further delay, let's go together and build the calculator. Okay, so let's see how we can easily evaluate a postfix expression. So we have to start from left to right and whenever we find an operator, then we have to apply between two operands or numbers in the previous. So here we have an expression. So as you can see here, we have an infix expression, which is just equivalent to this postfix expression. So how can we easily evaluate this? So whenever we find two numbers, then there is an operator here. We have to apply that operator between these two numbers. So for this case here, we have to take 10 multiplied by 4, which we are going to get 40 and then after that we have to append this inside our expression so for that case here we have 40 then we have to look for another operator which is just the division operator so we have to apply here 40 then we divide this by 5 which we are just going to get the answer to 8 and then we're going to send it back to our equation here and for now we have the additional operator and then we have to take two numbers here and we have to add them and for case we're just going to get the answer which is going to be 10 and for that case another operator is going to be found here at the last so we have to take 9 then we have to subtract this by 3 and the answer is going to be 6 and for that case, we have remained with two numbers. Then we have to finish up to apply our operator. And then we get our answer to be four. So this is how you can easily evaluate a postfix expression by using only a single scan. So let's see how we can easily implement this inside our code. Okay, now before we start to write our evaluation class, we have to deal with negative numbers. So for example, if we have an equation like this one, as you can see here, we have negative 20 added by 30. Then we have to minus with the answer inside this bracket here. And as you can see here, also we have a negative number. So how can we deal with this before when we are going to do evaluation? So we have to replace this, for example, this operator here with n so that we know this is just going to be a negative number so that we can easily deal with this. So let's create here a model class that is going to help us to convert this. Okay, now let's create here a class and here we can just call this model. Okay, now let's create here a private function. And we can just call this repress n, which is just repress negative. And here now we have to get a string. Okay, now let's create here an array that is going to be able to repress things so we can just call this array and we can just easily use here a string buffer and here we have to pass in our string okay now let's check if the first character is going to be a negative number so we can just call the here our array so if this is just going to be the case then we have to repress this with n Okay, so here we have dealt with the first character. So what if this negative number is going to be situated at the middle of the expression? So how can we deal with this? So we have to use a loop and loop through the whole equation and then we have to replace this with n. So let's do this by using a while loop. Okay, now let's create here a variable and we can just call this i and we can initialize this for the first time by zero. Okay, now let's enter inside here our while loop. Now we can just check if this i is going to be less than the array dot length. And here we can just take our i. Okay, now we have to check if this character is going to be a negative number. So we can just check if. Okay, so if this is just the case, then we have to check if this number has been occurring after an operator. So for example here, you can have an equation like this. So we know this is just going to be a negative number because this is just occurring after an operator. So let's add another ex another condition statement here to check if the array So for example, if this is just going to be an additional operator, then we know this is just going to be a negative number. And also we have to perform this to uh, all other operators. 
Okay, now let's check here if this is just going to be a negative number. If this is just occurring before a division or if this is just going to be occurring before a multiplication. Okay, so if this is just the case, then we have to replace, to replace this array. So as you can see here, we have just looked for the first character. So after an operator, if this is just going to be a negative number, then we have to replace that with N. Okay, now after that here, we have to return the result. And we can convert this back to string. So we are going to use this class when we have finished to create our arithmetic evaluation class. So now let's deal with this. Okay, now let's create here a new class. So we are going to use the same algorithm as how we used before, but I'm going to be explaining whenever there is a difference. So for case here, we have to copy this first. And here we was changing, we was checking if this is not numeric. So for now we can just check if this is not operator. And here we have to return false instead of true. And here we're going to return true. Okay, so here we're not going to use again precedence because we have already set inside our expression. Okay, so now here we want to set our evaluation function. So we can just call this evaluation. And this is just going to return a double. Okay, so here we want to create another variable. And this is just going to be a string variable. And this is just going to hold up the numbers which are going to be evaluated. So on previous, we were holding here the operators and here we are holding the numbers. So for that case, let's create here another rule. Okay, now let's check if this case is going to be a number. So inside here, we can just check if. It is not going to be an operator here, so we can just pass in here our car. And we have also to check if this is not going to be also a space separator. So we can just call this car is not equal to a space separator. And for this case, we have to append this inside our string holder. So we can just call this a string holder. Okay, now let's check here if we have a space separator. So we can just check if this character is going to be equal to a space separator. And also we have to check our string holder if it's not empty. So we can just call here our string holder. And this is not going to be equal to an empty string. And if this is just the case, then we have to push this inside our stack. So we can just call this dot push. And here we have to take our string holder and we want this to replace. So here we change when we created our model class, we changed the negative number with N. So whenever we find the minus sign before after an operator, then we change this to N. So we have to replace this. So for that case, we can just keep here our n and we have to separate this and return to our negative and we can just call this to double and for that case we have finished our case now let's check the other condition here and here if we are going to have an operator so we can just check here if this is not going this is just going to be an operator so we have to pass inside here our character so now we have to perform our evaluation so what we have to do, we have to get two numbers, then we have to perform the calculation. So we can just kill, call here our variable and we have to call this variable number one. And we can just call here our stack.pop. So we are going to get the first number and also we have to get the second variable. And here now we can just call stack.pop again to get the second number. Now we have to perform the evaluation Okay, now here we are going to use a when statement. And now we can just check if this character is going to be any type of an operator, then we have to perform that operation. So for our case here, if this is just going to be an addition, so we have to push this inside our stack. So we can just call stack.push. And now we take our second variable. 
and we have to add with our first variable. And now here we get our answer. So, and this can be nullable, so we can just make them to throw an exception whenever there is a null value. And for that case, we have performed. So we can just do the same to other operators. So if this is just going to be the case, then we have to keep here a minus sign so that we can just minus these things. Also here, if we have a division, so we can just divide these two. And for a case here, we have a multiplication. Then we have to multiply these two variables. Then here we have to change. So we can just use a power operator. Okay, so as you can see here, we are going to push everything inside our stack. So whenever we encounter anything, then we evaluate, then we push this to the stack. And also we have to perform all of these expressions here so that we can just get the answer. Okay, so here we have to return our values. So here we have finished to perform all of the checks. And after that, we have to pop everything here. So we can just collapse also this, the for loop. And here now we have to return. And what we have to return here, we can just call our stack dot pop. And here we are going to return the, the, val the last value. So this is just going to be the last value, which is just going to be our answer. And for that case, we have finished to create our evaluation class. So it's just really simple. We perform a single a single scan here and also we check if we have any operators and space separators. So we have to use these little tweaks in order to get our answer. Okay, so I think we have finished to create here our arithmetic class and we have the conversion. So what has remained here is to create a function that is going to help us to perform the calculations. So we can just come inside here our model class and down below here we can just create a function. So let's create here a fun and we're just going to call this result. And this now is going to receive a string and also it's just going to return a string which is just going to be the answer and for this case here now we have first to convert that expression so we have to use this repress negative here so we can just call here val and here we can just call string n and we can just call replace n and we have to pass inside here our string so we are just going to convert that now after that also we have to perform the postfix conversion so we can just call here postfix and now we can just call this infix to postfix. And also we have to pass in here our string n to do the conversion. And for that case, now we have to check. So if the postfix result returned is going to be equal to an error, so we have just to return. We don't have to perform calculations because this is just an error. So we can just call here return. And if that is not the case, then we have to return. And let's try here first, use here a try catch block. And inside here try catch block, we are going to catch an error. So this evaluation error. So sometimes we have an infinity evaluation. So zero divided by zero and other things. So we have to catch this. Otherwise our application is going to crash. So let's create here evaluation class, evaluation function. And we can just call here our arithmetic evaluation. And we can just call here evaluation and we have to pass in here our postfix. And for that case, we are going to get our postfix. And here we can just create a catch block. And we can just print the stack trace here. Okay, now we have to take our evaluation. And what we want to do, we can just return this to a string. So this is just going to be our evaluation class. Okay, so I think everything is ready. Now let's test here our classes. So we can just come inside here, our main activity. And inside here, we had an infix expression. And we are going to modify here inside the two and bracket. We have to add an operator for multiplication, for example. And here also, this is just going to be our postfix. And now let's create another variable, which is just going to be our result. And 
here we want to pass in our postfix conversion and we're going to get the result. Now let's try to run our application and see the output. So our app has launched successfully, but we have a slight problem. As you can see here, we have a large value than the calculations here. So let's fix this by coming here inside our calculations. So I have added this fix me to do's which we have to fix them. Okay, so we can navigate here to our fix me number one, which we have to add another condition here, which we have forgotten. And this is just the condition for brackets. And here we can navigate to our condition number two. So we forgot to reinitialize here our string variable. So we can just call here our string. When we finish here, we have to initialize back to an empty string. And for that case, we are just appending a lot of values, which is going to give us a larger number. Okay, so we can also navigate here inside our main activity. And here, this conversion, we are doing it inside our code here. So we are just doing this conversion here. And also here, we are doing the same conversion. So we have to remove this. And here, we are just going to call our infix directly here because the conversion is done inside our model class. So let's try to relearn again and see. Okay, hood coders. So the application has launched successfully. And as you can see here, we have our answer to be eight, which is just exactly when you do this calculation here, you're going to get eight. So let's leave it here for this video. So in the next video, we're going to finish up to set up our UI and hook everything up. So let's leave it here. If you find value out of these videos, please don't forget to provide the like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye bye for now.